Okay, so I have a Haunter holographic. Sorry about that. Hollow. It's in decent condition. It's like... I don't know, the hollow looks like it has abrasion scratches on it, so... I don't know about that one. That's a first... or uh, Fossil. Fossil holographic Haunter. I'm still going to protect all these because you just never know. If the prices keep going up, who knows? I mean, even this card's probably worth 10 to 20 at least. From what I saw, as long as it's not in, like, damaged condition, it still holds decent value. You know? So, that being said, move on to the next one. We got some big hitters coming, don't worry. Like, decent hitters. They're not crazy. The fairy. Hollow. Watch this. I don't carry it away. It's just fun to do. But a little wear at the bottom there. But overall, it's pretty good. This one doesn't really have too many issues with the hollow. It's weird. It's like the, the penny or the, the sleeve over like the course of the years of just. I moved multiple times, you know, in 20 years. So well, 15 rather. And the sleeve just, the sleeves just sort of like very minusculely scratch the cards and like that'll probably drop it a grade or more. I don't know. I don't know what that would do. I mean, it's whatever, you know, I really wish I would have stored these in protectors. I mean, they're, they're in very good condition for, you know, being in a booklet like. I have a video on my YouTube and everything else that shows off by the way got hypno hollow none of these are first edition i only have one big hitter first edition hollow and you'll see it here i'll show you near the end of the pokemon draw and from what they were saying now listen it's not a psa 10 the card i'm going to show you later this card's in pretty good shape hollow's not scratched that's good that's decent. Um, I think a PSA 10 of the card I'm going to show you later is worth like four and a half thousand dollars. This one is unfortunately not. Be luck. Maybe a few hundred. Maybe. I'm a little upset that it wasn't stored. I don't even remember how I got it. I don't even. I remember trading with kids back in the day. I remember. You know. Doing the whole nine. Nardacuno. I have two of these. But I have a set coming up. Hollow's pretty good. Looks like there's one minuscule scratch. These are in great shape, though. Like, honestly. The thing is, these cards right now, they wouldn't be worth getting them graded. It'd be like half the value, full value of the card. So, unless these ever appreciate higher, which first editions of these are worth great money, you know? But, uh, fortunately, these bad boys sleeves. I don't think it's good to put these in here without a penny sleeve on them. But it feels good to get, get these in here finally. And top? Top loaders aren't like cheap, man. It's like 30 bucks for 100 But I didn't care. Okay, they all got sleeves. Going. Alright. I have a ditto non-hollow. I'm not to that yet. Here's a ditto... Hollow, it's in great condition besides the the minuscule freaking scratches. I I don't even think you'll be able to make them out on this webcam. Maybe on my phone you'll be able to. This one's a little bad. That's a shame. I don't think he's worth a crap ton on a first edition, but still. You know, you know. And I have a heavy hitter too that it's a real shame. There's a bend on it. I think it's still worth 200 bucks, but 
<laughs> it's not the first edition, but you'll see him then. I remember getting it off of a kid when I was like 11, 12. And yeah, he, he played the shit out of it and didn't care. I knew a story. I had a Charizard. If this was first edition, I'll never. I cannot remember, but if it was first edition, this kid really screwed up. He lived two blocks away from me and he like penny scratched it, had marker all over this Charizard hollow, had it bent into oblivion. I remember trading him for it, like not much, just to have a Charizard at the time. And I don't know where that card got to. I don't have it. It's not worth a freaking thing, obviously, but I'd like to know if it was first edition. Probably not, but it's still wild. I remember that. Okay. Fable. Pretty good condition. I'm just going to call them penny sleeve scratches just from movement. He has. Or here she has a couple of these. Um, fortunately, but overall, good condition. I know I could have just like had all this done and just showed them off, but I already did a video of the cards. I just wanted to talk and reminisce a little bit, you know. Good old days. It's been really nostalgic getting back into this a little bit. It's just to like collect again. This stuff's so pricey, it's ridiculous. Ooh, we got a Gyarados. Always like this card. This is in great shape. Shape. And if these were first editions, I'd be Mank in the bank, and but you still have some. These is my anxiety get them out of getting them out of this book, though. <laughs> Driving me freaking nuts, dude. I was like, I don't have any top loaders. I had like seven when I was a kid. I don't even remember how I got them. Here it is. Good. Now we got two first edition Machamps. Now, just like everyone that sees this card off the gate, I think they're like super hyped. It looks like a base set first edition. Which I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it's a misprint and like a lot of the starter. I don't know. I don't know specifics, but it's a first edition. And it looks like it's a base set. Second one, there's two of them. I don't know, they might be worth 10 or 20 bucks, but unfortunately, apparently these are super common and they're not as hyped as they seem. But I'm, I'm still holding on to them. The one's a little... Wow, the one's actually quite messed up. Wow. You're not going to both get. But there's a big crease in there. Bottom. That's the scratched one, though, so that's actually good. That's the one that was already a little scratched. The one that's in good condition isn't bent. Man. I don't even know what happened. Who knows, you know? Animals playing them. It's just not giving a shit. I, I took very good care of my... I didn't really play my hollow as much. There's not play wear on them at all. It's mainly just from moving around in this in this booklet of penny sleeve what did the damn what did the freaking damage hopefully i can see that bend through the sector because that's really bad and i feel like i have more top loaders than than i should right now 100 to 100 right the one with the bend to be able to see that through See a lot of the imperfections through the protector, so that's cool. Yep, you can see it clear as day. Man, the card is jacked up. 
Wait till you see the one big boy that's jacked up. It made me sad. I couldn't even see it through the penny sleeve, honestly. We have Hitman Lee. Oh, good condition. One little scratch. Side. Those little penny sleeve scratches are game, but they're still in great condition. Not really much white on the back. Well, like I said, a lot of these average, you know, $15 value. Then when you get into like the, the sets, like the Flareons and stuff, some of them hit 40. Now, could that be a, a PSA 9? Sure. Mine might only be worth 20. No, I don't know specifics. But, on Lee. The only double of hollows I have are what was the uh, Articuno? I didn't really care about having doubles. I don't even remember how I. This pincer is like in great condition. The edges are a little worn. Looking good. Like I said, I only have one first edition hollow, so. That's a freaking shame. I'll never get over that. Really. Really upset that the young me didn't really give a shit. I remember seeing them at like flea markets. Out in the in the booster pack sitting out. You know, a lot of those. Booster packs are worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars today. As of this year, I guess, you know. Hollow page down. We have a lot of hollows, guys. All right. Pidgeot. These are in no real order. I have a couple sets together. Whitening around the edges. Huh. Little. Little wear, you know? Just a little bit of wear. Not too bad. Never a huge, huge fan. Last toy is probably my growing up. And I really like the Zolteon, Leon, Zapdos. Great thing about these. You can see pretty easily into them and see if there's any, any damage. Mr. Mime. Always liked him. Cars in good. Always liked him, but now that I'm older, seven year old me liked him. Don't like him. <laughs> it just seems annoying. I like. Always like I remember like thinking a lot of these were so rare back in the day and they really weren't. I remember seeing tons of just open booster boxes like out for sale, like what, three dollars a pack? Fifty. <sighs> Some of those packs can net you thousands of dollars tonight, buddy. If you have them sealed. It's crazy. How long we've been going? 30 minutes? This might end up being like a 50 minute video to an hour. Alright. Keep going. This card, I have no recollection of. Pretty good shape. Pocket Monsters card game. He's a hollow though. I don't think it's worth too much. Maybe 5, 10, 20. Who knows? If any of you guys see anything in here where, like, you notice something I missed, let me know. Air cards, I'm sure there's some I don't know about. I know a lot of the, like, big boy air cards. Yeah, nothing better to do on a, on a snowy friggin' day. I just wanted to show you some of these because I don't know if I'm going to get to actually do them. Like I said, you got Electabuzz, non promo. He's actually worth a couple bucks. Don Hollow Ditto. 
worth a couple bucks. They're Electabuzz. They're all in great shape. Magneton non hollow. <laughs> he might only be worth like a dollar. Now we got Tentacruel First Edition. I don't know. These guys, Cloyster First Edition. I don't even know. I think I might have got these off other kids. I have no idea. But I wish I knew people that had the Hollow First Editions out of whoever was actually buying these. I don't remember. I don't know if I bought a pack or not. Arcanine. I, I think he might be worth like a few dollars. That's the only reason why I have him out. Psyduck. Some of these actually go. Oh, he's a first edition. He might be worth. Some of the first editions might be worth more than just a. There's a Kabutops first edition. Non hollow, unfortunately. He's in great shape, too. Some of these might be worth more than I think. But probably will. Check them. Yeah, Shelter Cloister, first edition Tentacruel. And you got the. Yeah. I actually really want to make sure I get them into protectors. Those first edition cards. Not right now, but I will then. Okay, I got a lot more. Scyther. Ooh, got some white at the bottom. Too bad though, the hollow is nice. It was always pretty cool. Remember these, you know, these guys on the front of the packs back in the day, like the jungle set, fossil set, he set. Like I said, to like go and actually open more of these or find them, it's just super rare. First edition, you know, even these would be hard to come by because anyone who has them, I don't know, maybe a yard sale or something during the summer. Pretty good condition. I'm just going to say and just stop mentioning it, like half of these have like penny sleeve scratches that are so minuscule. I think... One and two or three has them. It is what it is. Probably takes it down. But I would never get these scored anyways unless these ended up appreciating to the point where it would be worth it, you know? It's more flashy having them in top loaders, you know, instead of flipping through a bunch of penny plus they're just really not as this should have been done forever ago but already had a haunter hollow right here's a victory bell hello actually in great condition It all depends on how the page moves and stuff over the course of the years of how bad it will get messed up. Yeah, so I think I already had a Haunter. So I actually have two Haunters and two Articunos. Get this one out of the way since we've already... Whoa. Oh, I have okay. I don't know. This is slightly worn. It's a non hollow haunter. This was behind my second hollow haunter. It's in pretty good condition. Highly doubt the non hollow is worth anything. What's weird is like, uh, hard is it? <sighs> There's a card where in hollow it's worth like 20 and then non hollow it's worth like 120. And I, I'm just I'm wondering if I doubt that's the case. I can't believe he was behind that. I can find out right now. Go to TCG player.
Two player. Haunter. Haunter. It is a base set card, too. Haunter base set. Base set. $1.59. No good. No good. I mean, still probably worth. The hollow is the only word. Oh, let me go back and see. Make sure I'm not crazy. I'm pretty sure I already had a. I have two haunters and two Articuno. I'll remember which card it was, by the way, that is worth a lot more non hollow than hollow. Because I have the hollow. Lapras. That card non hollow is worth a lot more. Man, it's gonna take I really apologize. Really messed with this before. But it'll be a long video for fun. The boot tops. He's in great condition. All the back. We'll like to see that too. There's not really any whitening on this one. So, just nostalgic, you know? Like, I fell out of the cards and stuff, and, like, this brought me back in a little bit. The nostalgia and wanting to collect. Like, I'm thinking of investing into some, like, magic cards for the future. Electrode, a little wear. Pokemon's hard to do, man, because it's like, like, I'm not going to be spending thousands of dollars into boosters stuff like that's i mean it's almost you know basically like gambling i've seen people but pokey rev i think he charges i don't know 500 to a thousand i don't know exactly so i might be out of line here but he charges about that much per pack out of a booster and then he opens them on stream and then some people they're definitely losing money some people hit and you know they're gaining Gaining. Ooh. I saved the best. Little wear. Holly Wrath. Hello. It's actually worn a bit more, fortunately. But, little storm. And if these were first. Would it might be the time to sell? What? Angus Khan. Oh, he's in great shape. He's in great shape. Wow, some of these stayed in much better shape. And I know I didn't play them. Dang. That might be... It could be a nine easily. I'm not a freaking, you know, a grader or nothing, but from what my, my limited knowledge... The left to right looks centered perfectly. Top and bottom looks perfect too. Back. Man. I don't know, actually. Top to bottom on the back, maybe. Not perfect, but that's a really good card. That might hit that might actually be fine. I don't know. Some of these in PSA 10s go for a lot more, but there's no way that'd be a 10. That is the one benefit of fresh out of the pack, you know. PSA 9s mainly. Nitto Queen. 
Chilling. Pretty good condition. Saving the big boys for life. Heavy hitters. As far as Pokemon, we're going to get to some magic cards. They're like worth 20 to 40 bucks a pop, you know? And then there's some that are nostalgic to me that aren't really worth much. Uh, I have a backstory on that. Wiggly Tough. So oh, tough. Bit of whitening around the edges. Breaking Wiggly. Crazy when you. When you go through some of these cards, you have like flashbacks to exactly how you got them and stuff. Like my Venusaur, I know I got from a pack from a flea market. I remember that clear as day. A hollow magneton. I don't really like this card. I never really have. In good shape. Be perfect centering. I said I'm not a connoisseur at this stuff, but I have limited knowledge. Learned a hell of a lot in the past two weeks, though. I'll tell you that. One hell of a lot. Alakazam, I love this card. I think he's only worth like 20. Where? Not too bad. I like him. I always feel like he's so much more rare than he is, even when I was a kid. You know? I remember him being hard to get. Why? Some heavy. That could easily be half a grand if if they come out to be really best condition. I know the one's a shame, and we'll talk about it. Um, gosh, two more pages to go through. All right. These are all pretty. Okay. Hitmon Chan. We already showed you a Hitmon Lee. I just got on my card. All right. He's in great condition. There's a Snorlax coming up. I have a non hollow and a hollow. Non hollow and him can't be. Wait. I always like Snorlax. I remember a bug in the Pokemon game in Game Boy. You had to go down to like the one the one coastline and if you just sat there for like an hour and just kept swimming around, you'd eventually fight him. I think it was a bug in the game. He was like leveled leveled astronomically high. Remember I would link up with my buddies and beat them with him i mean it would take like it take 45 minutes because they were both so high level and whatnot but let's go look at on hollow snor norlax is he base set jungle look wow hollow 28 dollars Really damaged eight dollars as low as non hollow four fifty. Where's my non hollow? I don't know. I know I have one. Ain't a big deal. Five dollars is five dollars, right? I mean you just never know. You just never know what these things, guys. To go up even more into next year, they could tank too. These weren't really worth much. I mean, all the super rare cards, super like epic rare cards, were always worth money, but they've all went up exponentially. Especially the Foul Plume. 
up, T? Going through some old cards, man. From when I was just a little freaking tyke. And I just got protectors for them, so I figured I'd stream while I'm doing this. And it's snowing like crazy here. Like 10 to 20 inches or some shit. I got like possibly two to three grand in Pokemon cards. Probably wouldn't. I don't know. I probably wouldn't sell them though. They're not first edition shadowless and sh you know anything about Pokemon. Those are the ones that are worth crazy amounts. Lapras, hollow. I'll show you my best card. I'll show you the heavy hitters are coming up here soon that are worth the most. None are first edition. Well, only one's first edition, unfortunately. Like, first edition Shadowless have, like, insane value. Some of them, like, 40 grand, 100 grand, shit like that. I don't have any. When I was a kid, I didn't give a shit about the first editions because I'm an idiot. If I could go back, I would uh definitely have collected more. But hindsight's 50-50, bro. Dude, you better go fucking find them. Are they old? Are they like base set cards? Or are they newer ones like uh, set two, uh, what, what, Neo editions? You have base set cards? Better get them. Here's a muck. Muck hollow. I don't think he's worth much, but six bucks is six bucks. We'll protect him. Left him at an old house. Oh my god. I just have so many hollows and they're all worth every single one of these worth at least 10 bucks, 10 to 40 bucks. And then you got the big hitters. Right now, for some reason, I checked these two years ago and they weren't worth really shit. Maybe a few hundred. Left them, bro. I'm gonna start scavenging like local card shops and shit for magic and Pokemon cards. Because I'm like sort of getting into a kick of just educating myself on this stuff. Chansey? I have two of these too. I don't know. Great condition, Hollow. First edition of these. <sighs> Pain money. He's not first edition though. Prices keep rising though, so I'm glad I'm storing these. I, will <laughs> I wish I would have done this a long time ago. But I didn't give a shit, to be honest, dude. I got these out like once every seven, eight years. Dude, if you had first edition holographics from the base set and shit, you could have been super fucking wealthy. It's like fucking gunk on some like not gunk but like hard material. It comes off fine, annoying as shit. But yeah, the best card I have in here that is actually a first edition. If it was a PSA ten, which is the best grade you can get from PSA, it's worth five thousand dollars. Mine's definitely not PSA ten. So, maybe a few hundred. Maybe. But it's great to have it because as people buy them and some get damaged and less and less are in the marketplace, the value of it goes up, right? So, yeah, I'm definitely happy that I have it. Definitely is not a PSA 10. Probably like a PSA 7. Norlax. I love this freaker back in the day. Video is gonna be an hour and a half, bro. Whatever. Relax.
<laughs> like some of these cards are adorable, dude. Don Holland, he's worth 28 bucks. Jolteon, great condition. Bad thing is, none of these would ever make a PSA 10, which is obvious. John. I used to love these cards. Flareon, Jolteon, Vaporeon. Can't believe I held on to these. Look his price up. Flareon. No, Jolteon. Jolteon, jungle. 36 bucks for him. Good condition. Dude, did the prices go up in the past? Flareon will be next. $44. I feel like these are appreciating every day, dude. It's because of all these fucking, like, famous people getting into Pokemon. Wow, Vaporeon's only worth 14 The other two are worth over fucking 35 I mean, to be fair, Vaporeon looks like the weakest little titty monster out of all three, so it makes sense. All right. I oh, know Jolteon and Blastoise. Love these. Playing when they properly. All right. So, Flareon. Don't worry. We got one more page, and then we get to the big hitters. There's only like four of them that are crazy. Flareon, good condition. Fucking penny sleeve scratches that are minuscule. But these are all definitely over a PSA 5 or 6, which is good. Flareon, dude. It brings back like vivid memories from when I was so young. Now the least valuable of all three is this motherfucker, Orion, and he's in great. Figure that. Wow, the centering's terrible on the back. <laughs> the centering's actually fucking terrible on this. Look at the bottom, and then look at the top. <laughs> if you had like a really expensive card. And it looked like that with the centering. That's terrible. Only worth 13. That's funny. That's probably the worst centering card I've seen in my collection. All right, so we have a page and a half. And I saved the best for last on purpose. As far as pokey main goes. All right, let's get into the one before. Okay, Gengar. Wow. He's a little penny sleeve nicked. I know first edition variant of him is worth quite a bit of money. Sort of cool. He is cool. Gengar is always cool. Remember him being a pain in the ass to get to when I was trying to get him. I don't know if I traded or I got him out of a pack. I'm going to say a pack. All right. Here and there. Cats. Fucking cats. Got it. All right. Ooh, almost grabbed the big boy. Aerodactyl. He's cool. The Aerodactyl. Pretty good condition. He 
Decent card. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Lame amongst me. Greatest condition either. Venomoth. I can't remember. I might have two of these. Still, I mean, 10 to 20 bucks is 10 to 20 bucks, you know. And, like, this shit keeps blowing up astronomically. Some of these, like, shitty ones might go for 50 bucks, you know. You make a hundred stack every two cards in the next year. Then again, this shit could fall off quicker than fuck. I don't really care either way. I've had these when they were worth a hundred. I've had them when now they're worth a couple grand. So, okay. Oh, this is another one of my top nine tails. Love this card. You are in great condition. A little whitening on the back, but I always like that card, man. The whitening bottom. Nippers. Like some black that probably get off. Whatever. Card's dope. All right. Mewtwo, holographic. You would think he'd be worth, like, probably worth 30 bucks, but... Know, Mewtwo just always seemed, like, so epic. And... No, I don't think he's worth the base set, too. Mewtwo... Mewtwo base set. Is there a non hollow of this? Shadowless is worth a decent amount. He's worth 38 bucks. Wow, he's worth 38 bucks. Okay, so he is on the higher end for like a non first edition. Okay, he's worth more than I thought. Hell yeah. What's up, Alex? You too. Got him in a protector. All right, I like this set too. Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. A little whitening on the back. There's nothing I can do about some of the wear, but they're still worth money, so that's cool. Whitening through sitting in fucking penny sleeves in a book for years on end, right there, and see some whitening. I mean. It is what it is. It is what it is, dog. Hell yeah, my brother. Zapdos. Love this fucker. He's in great condition. You just chilling like a moth, flying around like a mother. You just chilling. All right, we're like, okay, we're going to be getting into the expensive ones with some backstories.
Oh, Trice. Oh, man. Fuck is that on the card, man? I don't know. That might come off, but. Damn, you're. Some of these cards survived really fucking well, dude. Centering's perfect on it. Probably get an eight or a nine. Fuck. The shit. Right there. Yeah, all I'm doing is I'm sleeving them and then putting them into top top loaders. Which should have been done a bajillion fucking years ago. Fucking bajillion trillion years ago. I got stacks. These are all fucking hollows, man. That's what I'm talking about. We're getting there, baby. A lot of money here. A lot of money. If they were first edition, I probably would be selling them. <laughs> For, that would be fucking ridiculous. All right. The Venusaur. Great conditioning. Great condition. The only issue with this fucking card is the centering sucks dick. Side to the side. It's way off. But. Check his price. Venusaur base set. 130 bucks. Is that like. PSA 9 plus. Foil 130. Played 16. None of these have been played. So uh, probably 80 to 100 bucks. Not bad. In good condition. I've never played with any of my fucking hollows. But I have traded for some that were definitely played with. From back in the day. Next up, we're going to show Blast Toys. Probably one of my favorite cards. Get this freaking top loader open. Holy shiz, man. I can't believe this. Effed up. Unfortunate. I think I got him out of a pack. Venusaur, I, I got out of a pack and black. I mean, if this is first set, or if this was an air, a stage air card... Oh my god. He's in good condition. Well, there's whitening on the back. These cards should have been fucking in top loader. Dumbass. See, there's some fucking whitening on the bottom. Good shape, though. Bitch. Check his price. Blast Toys space set. $193. Damn. Okay, so between him, three, at least half a grand in the top three. These are good, yeah. At least half a grand. And then my my big big boy hitter is probably worth half a grand. Now the next two there's some saddening to Charizard. When I got it off of the kid, there is a bend on it. 
fucking bend on it. Kid, fuck this card up. Not a first edition, obviously, or I would have fucking still sold it for 50 G's. There's bends on it. It's definitely not in great condition. Probably can't even see, but there's definitely bends. But the good thing about it is a base set Charizard. Charizard is actively going for 250 bucks, but damaged. Damaged is like. Wait. Wait, 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 that's base set two. Okay. Okay, hold up. Shadowless is a whole nother story. I don't have Shadowless, but... A base set Charizard damaged. Damaged is much worse than this. A hundred bucks minimum. Max 505. So even with the Ben creases... Man, he fucked this card up, dude. Wish I could go back to when I was 11 and... Tell that kid what's up. Maybe two or three hundred bucks. Maybe not. Either way, a stack, hundred bucks. Might keep going up in value. I don't know. That's a shame. That's a sad story that that card's in that condition. But I'm happy to have it. It's nostalgic. But it's crazy like a fucking damaged ass card. Can go for a hundred bucks. People are going to pay a hundred bucks for damage. Damage is like bad. This might be considered damaged. But the front's in great condition. The hollow's in great condition. And the centering. Oh my god, the centering was great. Game and a half right there. What can you do, though? I know that was like that before I got it. I was just happy to have it. Still snowing. I was just happy to have a Charizard, honestly. I know damn well I didn't play it. At the three. The three. This could potentially be like 600 bucks. Maybe more, maybe less. Maybe more, maybe less. Wait, you got 100. 250 and then minimal 100. I think I could get 250 for it. So there's money in those three. Now, the best card I have this card in PSA 10 mint condition is worth almost five grand four, four to five thousand dollars. This is not a PSA 10 card. There is light whitening on the back. The bottom. So it's probably between a 7 and a 9. And there is sleeve, uh, penny sleeve wear on the front. Like minuscule. Like very small. And a slight fucking bend on the edge. So like it's probably between a 5 and an 8 maybe. If I'm lucky. But it's a first edition Dragonite Hollow. It's technically, even to this day, when you watch people open, like, the, the base set fossil packs, first edition, that cost, like, 20 grand. They cost 20 grand on eBay. This is one of the best pulls you can get. I watched a guy last night open a thing, and this was, like, the craze, this card. But when you pull it out of a pack, it's gem mint to PSA 9 condition, right? That's why... Getting it out of a pack is fucking nutty. So that card pool was at least two to five grand. This, I mean, at least 500 to a grand, I'm assuming. So that's a fucking first edition best pool out of a pack. I don't remember how the fuck I got it. See the first edition tag? Too bad it wasn't a gray stamp, dude. A gray stamp is when the ink was running out of the machines. Like, people pay more for air cards. They go wild for them. This card is so fucking cool, though, and so just rare. And I want to hold on to it because if Pokemon keeps going up in value, 
and people that have these don't know about them or they, they get damaged, the more rare it gets, right? So it could be potentially worth a lot. I mean, it's a fucking first edition fossil. Like, there's not many of them. I don't know how I got it. I, I, if I can remember correctly, I traded for it or I... Okay, this is what I this is what I was thinking. Just look at this. And if I could go back in time. This actually makes sense. This actually makes sense now that I'm thinking about it actively. Okay, check this out. I did. I think I got my hands on a first edition fossil pack booster pack back when I was a kid. Now, the reason why I know this is a fact, there's no way I traded for all these. Look at this. A first edition tentacle. Some all these are worth money too. A first edition tentacle. First edition cloister. They're all fossil. So this pack that I got all these first editions or the couple packs I opened back in the day, which I wish I could go back and fucking open every first edition ever that I saw in person because I've seen them and I just didn't care. There's a Kabutops first edition. He's non hollow. He's probably worth eighty bucks. There's a Ditto. He's not first edition. That's not included. He's not either. But a Psyduck. He's another fossil. My point being is I, I got a pack at some point in time. And I got a fucking... I got the best card. And I didn't really know it at the time. To me, Dragonite was like the pussy Charizard back when I was a kid. But that card... Yeah, that card's special. Even though it's not perfect. If that was a PSA 10, that's $5,000, man. But I watched PokeRev last night on YouTube. This guy, dude, he's fucking rich. Him and Leonhardt, they're fucking rich, dude. They're constantly buying insane packs. Their collections, they're millionaires off of their packs. And he was fucking going nuts to get this card. I don't think he hit it last night. But obviously it would have been a much better quality. But this should have been stored right away when it was open, and it wasn't. So shame on me. Will I send it to you? And I'm sorry, Mitchell. Can't. That thing's a fucking gem. The only thing that thing's gonna do is appreciate in value. You know what I mean? Unless Pokemon dies off, which is a possibility. But I'll wait till I'm fucking 50. And the same thing's gonna happen again. There will be a, a craze. And at that time it'll be it'll be worth 15, 20 G's. You know what I mean? Like this shit you gotta hold on to. This shit's so fucking rare. A fucking booster box for for the boosters he's coming twenty thousand fucking dollars. That's the big boy. There's whitening on the back of it, and so minuscule. I'm obsessing over it, sorry. It, it, that, like, everything points to it coming from a pack. Sorry, I'm ranting on this. But I don't even know how I got my hands on a first edition pack. I don't know why I didn't buy more of them. I don't know. But it came from a fucking booster when I was like 11. And I didn't think of it just till now while, while I was making this video because I didn't know this whole time after I found it and shit, I was like, where did that come from? And then all these first edition fossils came up. It was from a pack, multiple packs. Cause I'm, I, cause I think that non hollow Kabutops first edition, which that's worth money too. That came from a pack that was like the rare in the pack. Right? So I must've opened two or three packs and hit, but anyways, I'm going to stop rambling about it. That's that's the Gucci. That baby right there is the Gucci Mon. So between these four cards could potentially be two thousand dollars, and that's not including like every single hollow. Every single hollow is worth more than ten bucks a piece, ten to fifty. So I have all these. I would say three to five grand I have in my collection 
and I it's not worth it for me to get them like the hollows graded because that'll take away half the cost. I need to find someone who just is going to take a a risk on it. But well, I I probably won't even sell the shit. So whatever. Okay, so there you go. That's all the Pokemon. I have a bunch of other base set shit worth like a dollar or two each. It's not really worth going on. But, uh... Arcanine base set. I have some magic to do. I'm gonna protect some magic cards. This is gonna end up being a two-hour fucking video. And then... I don't have any huge hitters on in poke or uh, magic. I only, well, alpha cards. They're already in protectors. I'm not fucking getting. Them. And they, yeah, from the collection I have. I have a whole stack here. There's a bunch that are worth twenty to forty. I mean, it's nothing impressive. Really not. There are magic cards worth a lot of fucking money though. The Black Lotus Alpha, $250,000. Need to get these first editions saved up. But first, I do want to I do want to do some magic ones quick. I already showed off the Charmanders, the the Bulbasaur's, the Squirtles, they're all worth 5 bucks a piece. That's why I'm going to Save them. The first editions. That's all that I'm really gonna protect from that. Um, I have a whole bunch here. Like a lot of these are worth, you know, two to five bucks. I'm not really gonna them just yet some of them are nostalgic but i'll get the value ones ready to go high market ration on port i looked these up and now I Aura shards, that's worth Citadel Pain. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back through some of these. Some of these I just have in here for nostalgia, they're not really worth money. All right, here's some revised cards. These are 20 years old. Nature's Lore, worth a few bucks. Revised. They're not nearly as profitable as Unlimited, Beta, or Alpha. Goes Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Revised, 4th Edition, 5th. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, they're the bangers. The only card, like the Dingus Egg, a few bucks. I'm going to protect them. Which hit did I get? The Rock Hydra. Okay. Rock Hydra. Rock Hydra. Magic. Revised. Hit. You gotta be very specific because there's so many reprint reprints in Magic. These were three bucks. Okay, the Hydras were three bucks. Now the only. <laughs> The only heavy hitter I got in uh, Revised is the Shivan Dragon. He's worth... Let's, let's double check. Shivan Dragon. I got a funny backstory with magic. 12 bucks. So, these ever appreciate. That's good. Nature's Lore. And I looked up the prices on these and I can't remember... Can't remember. Okay. All right. Nature's lore. See if these are worth protecting. Who knows? In time, they may. Lore. 
Why did I save this one? There's a reason. There's a reason for it. Nature's lore. In a, some of those Pokemon first edition, like non hollows I have, I can't find exact pricings. They might be worth a good amount. Okay, four bucks for nature. Not too much. I have a lot of like elemental blasts and stuff worth like a dollar regrowth. Nothing crazy in revised, but the thing about revised is it's cheap. And if it ever pops off, because they are old cards, there's money. There'd be money, you know, to be made. So I'm considering going to some card shops and really getting into this. Okay. Let's just go through what I have. I want to keep looking up prices because I don't know. We'll catch very like some of these are not worth money. Very. I save this one dollar. Okay, so dollar dollar. Okay, I remember which ones are the good, the decent header, at least. Okay, Citadel of Pain from Prophecy, which I was obsessed with when I was younger, and unfortunately, there's only like a few cards that are worth. Any substantial amount in that in that pack. Like I just love the avatars and they just did not really age well. Like they're not worth shit. But Citadel, Citadel of Pain. Pain Prophecy. It's worth ten bucks. Ten bucks. Aura shards. I didn't know this was worth anything. It's in great condition. Our shards. Our shards. I know. That's worth 10 bucks. Yeah, I didn't know. An invasion card, 10 bucks. Save that. Dragon Arc. Like I said, I don't have any crazy ass hitters. I have a few worth 25. Dragon Arc. What's that? Three bucks? I worth doing. Guy ship weatherlight. I don't. Some of this shit's not money. Why did I put it in here? Give me your mailing address and. Ooh. Art is worth 103 bucks. Man, that's only worth two. Uh, oh. Plague wind. Dark suspicions. Plague wind. Ah, two bucks. What are here with this? These aren't worth. Some of these aren't worth shit. But okay, I'll show you the nostalgic ones that I'm only. I'm protecting just because, like, growing up. These things were the fucking tits, and they were worth a lot more. These prophecy just did not age well, dude. And I, I want to like maybe buy some more cards because if they do blow up one day, they're just they're so cheap. Like here's a hollow. Can tell, but it's hollow. It's an avatar of might. There was avatar of woe, hope, might. There's four or five of them. Fury, and I love the prophecy set. Like. After I got out of Pokemon, like, slight after, I was buying Prophecies fucking sets like crazy. Like, I have a shit ton of bulk. These guys are only worth, like, 3 to 40 bucks a piece if you have foils, which are basically just holographics in magic terms. Um, I market, Rishadon Port. High market. Precondition. This is worth ten to thirty. I'm not even gonna price check it. Rishid on port, ten to thirty bucks. I came across them. I didn't know they were worth much. They were decent hits. I'll protect. And then here's the the crazy shit. Um, 
Okay, so I bought all these prophecy cards, right? Back in the day. And unfortunately, they didn't really age well. But one of the most expensive commons in Magic at the moment is called Rhystic Study, okay? And it's in the fucking prophecy deck. And I hit three of them. They're worth 20 to 40 bucks a piece. So this could be a hundred bucks, maybe 60 to 140 bucks in fucking commons from prophecy. So like, to be fair, the money I spent, I could easily make back. I mean, that this is fucking 20 years ago. I mean, a, a booster, a booster uh, box is 700 bucks for prophecy. Even to this day, like it's still worth money, the box, but. The fucking common is worth more than the fucking avatars, which just pisses me off, but I'm still going to hold on to everything, you know? Whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. Free mana, that's why it's so valuable. And it's a common, but let's look up the price. Mystic Study, it's the most valuable common card. It's so fucking stupid. That... The, the deck I, you know, invested in. As low as 23 bucks for damage. Oh, that's Jumpstart. Prophecy. 20 bucks for damage. And 26 bucks for uh, well-maintained. Oh my god, there's foils, Rhystic Studies. I never hit one. I never hit a fucking foil. There were 200 bucks. So 26. Moderately played 24. Which is weird. It's because the card is such a good stat. People want the stat. They want to play it. So, yeah, about seventy-five bucks in Rhystic Studies. Um, I have a shit ton of ball cards. There might be something I missed. I don't know. I have two hundred more top loaders coming because I'm gonna protect all my revised Magic cards because. A lot of the guys I follow on YouTube that are like fucking rich ass fucking collector dudes, they're saying down the road those cards might go from 50 cents a piece up to 50 to 100. Might take 5, 10, 15 years, but if you can buy bulk, if you spend 50 bucks and have 300 cards today, that could turn into tens of thousands down the line, right? So, who knows? But, yeah, that was the thing. I I got I bought a lot of Nemesis uh decks too. And uh Marquise like starter packs and shit, like stuff like that. And just I didn't hit I didn't hit the lotto with them. I mean, to be fair, a lot of the money's in the alpha beta and unlimited cards. Now, another thing I didn't hit. Dual land cards? Dude, they're listed at 500 to a grand. I, like, I'm really salty. I did not get any. Like, they're worth a lot of money. Even revised edition cards in dual lands are worth... You're talking... You're talking fucking 500 to 1,000. So if you look up at an alpha dual land or a beta or a limited, an alpha would probably be 10 grand for a fucking dual land card. Like... I don't know, the past two weeks I've learned so much because I really didn't care before, and now, like, I'm going to make it sort of a hobby to collect, like, lower-end cards and hope they appreciate in value. Like, you just can't go in, like, you can invest in the, like, lower-end magic boxes. Like, it still costs, like, 100, 200 bucks to buy, like, a booster box. You know, you can invest now and then hopefully in five, ten years, you you know, you hit it. Which isn't a bad thing. It's smart, in my opinion. Um, But like the old ones, revised is the cheapest old set. Alpha, beta, and limited, like you're paying out the ass. You're talking hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of dollars. So like, I could invest into that. But I'm not trying to fucking like break bank over a booster pack, bro. Like... What, a fossil set of Pokemon? 20 grand? Um, don't get me wrong, you can make your money. You can make a shit ton of money doing this shit, bro. Like, but could you imagine 
if you spent like that kind of money and just didn't hit because i i do see people giving pokey rev like a grand to, for him to open a pack on his stream and they don't they don't get much some people make three fucking grand half of them if not more they're they're fucking losing out 700 bucks and then he sends the card so they gotta get them graded and find buyers like, I know it's for nostalgia. Like, a lot of these people aren't just dumping a grand for a pack on a fucking YouTube opening, you know, for no reason. Like, people have money. But it's just, like, fucking risky. I'd rather, like, take the penny stock, you know, routine and invest into the cheap old cards and just hope. But anyways, that's all I got to show. I got a shit ton more of, like, bulk. Like, there's a lot of, like, 50 cents to $4 cards. Which I'm going to protect them all, but they're not really worth showing. You saw the big boys, the Dragonite, the Charizard, Blastoise, Base Set, the Venusaur. They're all the big boys. And this is the mother tier for me. Like like I said, the fucking Fossil Set best card right now. Even to this day, like people fucking are craving this out of the Fossil Set. So that's full of shit. And if I could go back and say one thing to my child self. I would say get your ass in there and buy all these first edition fucking booster packs and boxes. It's hard, you know, because like I'm 11, so like my parents are fucking like not wanting to buy a shit ton of cards, you know, it's like impossible at that age, right? But some of these guys, they were the right age, you know, 17, 18 at the time. Now they're like in their 40s and they're fucking rich as shit because they were spending their own money into this, right? But my girl's calling. I'm a, I'm basically going to cut the stream. I'll be back on Game and Cod in a bit, guys. But that's basically all I got to show for now. All right. Take it easy.